Welcome to this Catholic Mass on March 19th, 2023, the fourth Sunday of Lent. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Gary Coulter, Director of Our Lady of Good Counsel Retreat House. This Mass is sponsored by the Diocese of Lincoln. Thank you very much for joining us today, and may God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself for healing and strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Elab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, does God see. Because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a handsome youth, behold, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord, the Lord is my, is my shepherd. shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me 
in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So when the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see, he said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So now, so some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel gives us this wonderful story of Jesus healing the man born blind. A chance to see how this Gospel speaks to each of us, providing a meditation on who Jesus is and our call to follow him this season of Lent. Lent is 40 days, recalling the 40 days Christ spent fasting in the desert, but also the 40 years the Israelites spent wandering in the desert. Jesus is in Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Booths, which was a remembrance of those 40 years that the Jews spent living in tents or booths. The Jews held this feast then as a reminder of their complete dependence on God, just as they had to depend on him for guidance, food, and water in the desert. So, too, we have to learn and recognize our total dependence on him. 
Notice they didn't have nice electric lights to line the streets of Jerusalem. It was pitch black at night. But to celebrate how the Lord led the people through the desert as a cloud of fire, huge torches were erected during this feast, which lit up the whole city. And it's during this that Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus claims to be an even greater light than those torches that lit that city, that he is that light, like that pillar of fire that led the people in the desert, who can lead the blind from darkness into light. A second part of this Jewish feast was to bring water from the pool of Siloam to the temple, remembering how the Lord gave the people water when they were in the desert. Now Christ sends the blind man to wash in that same pool of Siloam. It was an ancient water supply for the city of Jerusalem, but can represent for us the new waters that we receive in our baptism. Because there, Jesus not only cures blindness, but washes away sin. As the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David, so the Holy Spirit rushes upon us, giving us new life. During Lent, catechumens are preparing for their baptism into Christ. Candidates are preparing to come into full communion with the church, and each of us are preparing to renew our baptismal promises. What does this really mean? That promise is a decision to follow Christ, a choice filled with consequences. Since baptism is a true entry into the holiness of God, it would be a contradiction to settle for a life of mediocrity. To ask catechumens, do you wish to receive baptism? Means to ask them, do you wish to become holy? That's what we're being asked when we renew our baptismal promises this Easter. Do you wish to become holy? We're halfway through Lent. And so the church encourages us to continue our penances and even to have joy during our suffering. How can we do this? I'm reminded of my grade school piano teacher. She was always a very cheerful person, but she suffered greatly for like the man in today's gospel, she was blind. Did that stop her from being happy? No, she used the gifts God had given her. She was a great musician and teacher. Our first reading reminds us, not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Although she was blind, my piano teacher probably saw many things more clearly than we do. Just imagine that gift of never judging someone based on their appearance. But she also suffered greatly because ordinary things like getting dressed or cooking a meal that we take for granted were most difficult for her. But she offered those sufferings to God, remained joyful, and believed there was a greater power. The power revealed by Jesus in today's gospel miracle. Are we dead and blinded by sin, living in the darkness of the world? Then we must turn to Jesus. Do we forget that we totally depend on him? Then we must commit ourselves to Jesus Christ. Do we believe his healing power can be present in our lives today? Then I must walk in the light of Jesus Christ and say with today's gospel, I was blind, but now I see. To him be glory forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we continue our Lenten journey, let us never grow weary of turning to the Lord and asking him to hear our prayers and our petitions. That our Holy Father and all bishops may be given light and strength to carry out their vocation as successors of the apostles, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that government leaders may work untiringly for that justice which is the foundation for peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those chosen to receive the sacrament of baptism this Easter may continue to be enlightened by Christ the Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our society may be cured of spiritual blindness and rediscover the equal dignity of the unborn, the terminally ill, those on death row, and all those who are oppressed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and the religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are ill may be comforted, and those who have died may be welcomed into eternal joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, as we bring our needs before you, grant that we may see your Son clearly and receive his gift of holiness. We ask this in his name, and in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in the darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, that with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Take up your cross, the Savior said, if you would my disciple be. Take up your cross with willing heart and humbly follow after me. Take up your cross, let not its weight fill your weak spirit with alarm. His strength shall bear your spirit up and brace your heart and nerve your heart. Hello, my name is Bishop James Conley, the Catholic Bishop of the Diocese of Lincoln. As Catholics, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is the greatest and most powerful prayer we can offer because it is through the Mass that we celebrate the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We are happy to make this broadcast available for those who are unable to come to Mass in person, and also for those who are not Catholic but might be interested in our faith. If you would like more information about the Catholic faith, please use the information on the screen to contact us, or you may contact your local parish. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you and your loved ones.